Okay, so the barn door drill essentially starts out something like this. You have four defenders in the backfield here um, in your flat back four, which really, as you know, is not flat. You've got these two that play a little higher on each side than the, than the two center backs. Um, so your left back and right back play a little higher. But the goalkeeper starts with the ball. Goalkeeper, goalkeeper punts the ball out. As soon as the goalkeeper punts the ball, all four defenders spread. So the idea here is that they have to get out of position and get back into position rapidly while the attack starts to starts to come at them. So where do they spread to? Um, the left back would go to the sideline and just touch the sideline. These pink triangles that I've I've outlined. The um, center backs would spread out to their respective triangles. The right back would go to the sideline on the right. The goalkeeper has to go back and touch a goalpost. All right, as soon as, again, as soon as the ball is punted, and the goalkeeper should really be punting the ball from the top of the box, um, uh, depending on their age, of course. If they're, if they're young or if they're more powerful, they can kick it from PK spot or something, so it's not going all the way in behind. But um, generally for youth, obviously, they're going to be lucky if they get it to midfield. So they should be playing the ball um, from the top of the box to midfield. The yellow, the attackers, I, I can, I've played with anywhere from five if the defenders are weak. You might want five players here, all the way up to seven if the defenders are really strong. This game is oriented, if you remember, for the defense. Um, and there are a couple of conditions that make it easier for the defense. So as the ball's played forward, they trap the ball out of the air. You can make that part of your practice. You can hold... Um, you can hold conditions that say if you don't touch it out of the air, if you let it hit the ground first, then everybody has to drop and give push-ups and we redo a kick or something like that. Or you can just say, let's trap it as quickly as we can and start the attack. So they win the ball and they, they attack. As soon as they um, can, of course, you can play this game where you teach and work on training the attackers, but most of the time it's a game oriented for defense. So explain that. That's really critical that you explain to the attackers that it's the defense is the team that is supposed to be training in this exercise. The attackers just get to have fun attacking with numbers up. Um, and uh, explain to the attackers that because the defense is outnumbered, because defense is, um, is uh, training here, um, we're going to make conditions that make the defense actually have some success. And those successes are as follows. As soon as as you see the attack, so if all these players have come down, let's say that potentially they, they um, stay in formation of some sort. If they all come down and the ball, let's say, uh, let's put our ball in here in, um, in red. So let's say the ball is here and this guy passes it back, which means the defense steps up. Then as soon as the ball is passed back and, del and it's delayed, I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's passed back and then this guy immediately one touches it over there or something. That's a pretty good attack. But if this guy delays it, um, if, the def if the attack delays the attack and the defense is successful in delaying the attack, then they win and it starts again. So the attackers would retreat all the way back, get a little conditioning. The defense gets back in position while we wait for the goalkeeper to play another ball out. All right. Um, so again, it's stressed that the defense's goal is to delay the attack, delay the attack long enough to get defenders from midfield, their fellow midfielders who are not in play to get back and help them, right? There are no midfielders in the exercise, but the, the, the mentality is you need to delay the attack, especially when your number's down. All right. But it's more than that. Um, that's a, that's kind of a more advanced when I have defense that knows how to work, um, more advanced tactic. Um, but Really, it's about making sure that this defense moves properly, um, making sure that they know what they're doing. So, for example, if the attack has materialized on the right side of the field and the ball is, let's say, here, what you're looking for, of course, is that this player pressures. Um, I actually don't mind pressuring them in such a way where uh, we, we force them where the, the cover is. And then these players swing over the way a barn door would slide. They swing over and they defend um, in a pressure, cover, and then balance. The other balance on this side is the sideline. Of course, he's got this player, and this player could run down the sideline and they could pass the ball over to him, which is why I'm saying 
um, it would be better if the defender in black on the left back position here pushes them inside and doesn't allow them to go towards the wing. All right. Of course, that would be mimicked on the other side of the field. If the, if the ball swung on this side, then you'd be looking for this attack, this defender to step up to the ball. Um, but the whole point of the game, more than anything else, is to work on the, the shifting and formation of these players as rapidly as they can shift and get into this shape. The Nike swoosh, if you would. Um, that's kind of a terrible version of it, but should be, you know what I mean. I think you get what I mean. The Nike swoosh. I do tend to have this guy play just a hair in front so they can intercept a, a long ball or a ball that, that uh, is attempted to be played straight across a little quicker. But for weaker players, when you know that it's going to take the attack on the other side of the field, when it's going to take these guys, or these guys longer to settle a ball on their first touch, if their first touch isn't great, then you can have your right back stay right in line with the center backs. All right. Um, if the attack materializes on this in the center, I'm not going to show necessarily the, uh, the left side, but if it materializes into the center of the field, let me pull these guys a little differently. Um, this guy back into a spot, put the defenders back in their spots generally. All right. If the attack, if the attack comes through the center, um, so let's say it is more central. Now we're looking for this defender to step up, this defender to get a cover position, this defender to get a cover position, this defender to give us a little more balance. So since most of their players are on this side of the field, there's more space on this side of the field, you need more balance on this side of the field. But you're looking for that defensive triangular shape. Um, obviously from the attackers, you're looking for a little creativity, get this guy to try to run through, see if your defender here in black tries to chase him or if they stay put, right? If your defender here tries to trail, whoops, tries to trail this attacker as he runs, now all of a sudden we've opened up a wing for this guy to try to run through and play a shot even, play a shot onto goal. So it's, uh, it's really, again, the activity, very simple. You have all the players on attack start on the, at midfield or back, you have all the players on defense start in their regular positions. When the ball is shot, these players spread. The defenders spread into position. They get out of position, and they have to hustle back into position while the attack is formulating and coming down their throats. All right? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. There are a lot of little elements you can add or take away. Um, you can add um, delayed midfielders. If you don't want to stop and start a new ball every time the, the defense does their job of delaying, then you can add midfielders that come in to help out. Um, you could uh, position a midfielder, let's say, um, here and here, and basically put maybe a, retrain a retaining line across the middle, um, just in front of the box, a retaining line, and say if the ball ever um, penetrates or if any player penetrates past that line, now these players come in and are active to help out. So you can add recovering defenders. Um, there are a number of different things you could do to make this a little more active. One of the things that I have done, to be honest with you, is I have added, um, especially when players have trouble staying in their own respective area, I have added vertical lines across the field or up the field like this and basically said, we're going to give up this space to any attacker who wants to run in that space outside the 18. We're gonna give up this space to any attacker who wants to run in that space outside the 18. This defender is only allowed to defend in here. These two defenders are only allowed to defend in the center channel, which is the width of the six yard box. And then this defender is only allowed to defend in this channel. Obviously, there shouldn't be all the way up the field. They're not gonna be able to get up that high by the time the ball has come down. There's, most of their defending is gonna happen in the 10 yards right in front of the 18 yard box but they should stay in their channel. This, this is, a, is how I would start a lot of times to keep players understanding their zone. And if they get out of that zone, they've probably unbalanced the defense. Um, but you remove those probably after the first 10, 15 minutes, those channels disappear and now players are allowed to go anywhere, but you'll see that they stay generally in their channels anyway because they've trained it and they learned it. All right, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this is helpful. I'm sorry it took me so long to give it to you.